Welcome to Compared to Who, the podcast to help you stop comparing and start living. I'm your host, Heather Creekmore. I hate to admit this, but I used to secretly obsess over my appearance. I thought it was part of my job as a woman to always look better, but never felt like I could be good enough. Maybe you can relate. God, in His grace, showed me a way out, and I want to give you all the tools you need to break free too. If you've ever spent too much time stressing over your looks, I get it. I hope you'll keep listening and find the same freedom I have. Here are three other things you should know about me. I'm a minivan driving mom of four. I'm author of the book Compared to Who and The Burden of Better. I'm a blogger at comparedtowho.me and you just may have seen my epic big fail on Netflix. If you've ever struggled with comparison or body image issues, Compared to Who is the show for you. I hope you enjoy today's episode and hey, tell a friend about it. Hey there, welcome to the Compared to Who show. I'm Heather Creekmore and I'm so glad you are watching or listening today. Compared to Who is part of the Edify Podcast Network. Today, we are continuing our conversation with two of my friends, Charlie Castle and Erin Todd. We had an awesome conversation in part one. So go listen to that one first. But what we're doing is we are just dissecting and revisiting the different interviews I did through this fall with non-diet dietitians. So these are women who are trained in all things nutrition and yet believe in a non-diet approach as the best approach to be healthy. And when I say healthy, I mean healthy physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, all health is not just your body size. Okay. So today we're going to continue our conversation. Erin and Shirley, welcome back. We're glad to be here. So we ended yesterday talking about my interview with Stephanie Reinhold and all the candy. And so that was kind of fun. You might want to go listen to that one. If you haven't listened to that episode yet, even though it was seasonal, we timed it right around Halloween when trick or treat candy is going to come out. There's going to be more candy coming around Christmas if your house is anything like mine. Um, so go listen to that episode if you haven't listened to it yet, because there's a lot of interesting truth there. And then Aaron and Charlene and I talked about kind of what really happened. I tried to do what Dr. Reinhold, what Stephanie told me to do in terms of candy and it kind of worked actually more than kind of worked. I think it did work. So um, go listen to those. But today we're going to jump in talking first about the interview I did with Brooke Fredrickson. Now, Brooke's also a non-diet RD and Brooke and I started our conversation by talking about the acronym HAZE, which stands for health at every size. It comes from a book. There's a lot there. Charlie. Tell me, just give me the nutshell. What is haze? Give me a little bit of the science, like health at every size. That might be the first time someone's ever heard that. Fill me in a little there. Yeah. So basically that you can be healthy in all different body sizes. So health isn't based on your weight or the size of your body. Health is typically more uh, a result of your habits Um, spiritual habits, your physical movement habits, your eating habits, um, your social environment, um, all of these things more play into your health than your weight does. And the health at every size research really breaks that down looking at uh, markers like blood pressure, uh, blood sugar, incidence of diabetes, you know, all of those, those health markers that we think of. And really, we've been told this lie that that weight being overweight, I use quotation marks or a higher weight causes high blood pressure, diabetes, insulin resistance, all of those things. Um, But really, what the research shows what health at every size talks about is that a higher weight might just be another symptom. So they are, they come together, right? We see them happening together, um, but the, they're not necessarily causing each other. So it's called correlation, right? They're correlated, mm-hmm. but correlation is not causation. So often your lifestyle, many things may result in you being 
a higher weight than maybe was natural for you in maybe having high blood pressure or having diabetes. Um, but losing the weight isn't actually going to lower the blood pressure, improve the blood sugar, those kinds of things. It's your behaviors, hmm. regardless of weight change, that's going to improve those things. Does now, that make sense? Yeah. And that probably blew someone's mind, right? Because that's like, oh, you are speaking mm -hmm. like heresy yes. in our world, right? Losing weight equals I am healthier on every measure. I mean, mm -hmm. it only will take me three minutes on Instagram to find someone's before and after picture and how much healthier they are now that they are, I don't mm -hmm. whatever amount of pounds less that that automatically means they're healthier. But I'll tell you, I was having this conversation with a friend the other day. And so I, I should just post, I don't have a lot of pictures from my really thin days. Honestly, we didn't have cameras on our phone and I didn't think I looked good. So I didn't want to be in pictures, but the few pictures I have from my workout two times a day and only eat salmon and cauliflower and cantaloupe um, days, like I was really thin. And I think if someone at the gym saw me, they would have been like, that's, that's a really healthy person right there. And if someone observed my eating, they would have thought that's a healthy person right there. If someone saw me work out, they would have, oh, she exercises, but that was not a healthy person at all. Right. And I am so much healthier now in a bigger body <laughs> than I was then. And I know like health at every size isn't really about the emotional, spiritual, mental part. It's more just about the science of it is okay. Like we have been lied to by diet culture <laughs> on this front, but yeah, I mean, there's something wrong with our programming, mm -hmm. right. That we, yeah. that we make that judgment and then we make a judgment for ourselves and for other people. Right. Yeah. And let me just say, I think a really good way to highlight this is, again, talking about the lenses of how you're looking at this, because for a lay person in our regular culture, they might look at you and your habits and everything that was going on then and thinking, wow, like she is really healthy and she really cares about her health and, you know, whatever all those things are. But if a dietitian or a physician or a counselor that works with eating disorders would have looked at that they would have said oh this is very disordered relationship with food and body and exercise so mm -hmm. it's something really to think about that i think this really can open people's eyes is that often what the diet plan is teaching you or the influencer on instagram mm -hmm. is is teaching or even some of the stuff that you might be hearing from your doctor, I hate to say that, but it, it does happen. They're teaching you these healthy habits that are actually disordered eating habits or disordered exercise habits. So really think about that and let that kind of open your eyes a little bit that if you're looking at this through a different lens, it's really unhealthy behaviors. Yeah. So Aaron, I'm going to toss this to you with this tease. So we have been taught to worship disordered eating. Mm -hmm. We have been taught to worship the results, the symptoms of disordered eating. And really we have been taught mm -hmm. that this is, this is what we should do, what we should look like. Erin, your thoughts. Yeah, we have been. This is why this is such a, I'm going to go there again, spiritual warfare issue. Like we are being conditioned to worship the created instead of the creator. And oh my goodness, does the enemy win when we do that? Living by the world's values, right? Like the world puts this on a pedestal and we go worship it. Yeah. Does that sound like something? <laughs> it's idolatry, y'all. Like it's mm -hmm. totally idolatry. And um, the thing that I'm starting to wake up to um, is how how ugly that is when it plays out in our relationships with other people. Like just going back to what you guys were saying a minute ago about looking at somebody and judging them, you can't know their health by looking at them. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And you're not treating them like an image bearer of God when you do that. Yes. It is making this like sickness on all of us. Mm -hmm. Like, even if you don't have the behaviors yourself, if you're not practicing them, if you're giving somebody a compliment, 
based mm-hmm. on those set of values, you're participating in that mm-hmm. right. and you're getting sucked into it. And it's just, it's awful. We, we need to burn it to the ground, y'all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm going to make you a little sign. You can just hold up and say spiritual warfare. Spiritual attack, yeah. It's spiritual attack, <laughs> but no, you're so, you're so right. Right. Because it's so subtle. I mean, that's the number one thing when people read compared to who they're like, Oh my word, I had no idea this could be idolatry. And I'm like, yeah, that's why I wrote the book. Cause I had no idea it could be idolatry. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, that's, that's where the eyes have to be open first. Like if you've never yes. considered that this is idolatry, Oh, hello, this, this is something new for you. And I even, I have a problem still with so many people in the Christian arena, like skipping that part or, or like, okay, here's this much information about how awesome your body was. And then here's one line that it might be idolatry. If you think about this too much, like, that bothers me because I feel mm-hmm. like, no, 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 the culture we live in. And in fact, to the yesterday, I mentioned this, this quote that someone put on Facebook, but like all roads have to lead to intuitive eating. If you want to be free, because if you live in diet culture, this is what you like. You're part of the culture has the word cult in it, right? Like, mm-hmm. you're, like you're part of the cult of beliefs that this body size is what everyone needs to have and should have. And this should be worshiped and glorified. Right. Yeah. 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 I think Aaron said it perfectly that you're following this set of values, right? You're following this set of values that these, this body should be worshiped. These certain things are great. And even like you said, you know, it's like, we say that it's about health or we want it to be healthy, but we can just throw health out the window to have this body that looks healthy according mm-hmm. to the world's standards. Right. Um, so I think it's so important to, to really ask yourself, like, what set of values am I following here? What's my goal? What am I really trying to achieve? What do I really care about? What am I worshiping? Right. Because if you look to the word, you start to have very different thoughts and desires and beliefs than you do if you're looking to the world. This podcast is part of the Edify Podcast Network. Edify is a faith-inspiring app that brings together thousands of the best Christian podcasts in one place for your listening enjoyment. Cut through the noise and grow your faith by diving into the world's top Christian podcasts today. Download the Edify app for free from the App Store or Google Play or by going to edify.app. That's E-D-I-F-I dot app. I mean, honestly, when these thoughts and values, these diet culture thoughts and values, when they dictate our actions, we do treat other people differently. And we don't have time to go there like fully Mm -hmm. today, but just thinking about what happens when you know, the one person eats dessert at the table and everyone else is like, well, I'm being good. What messages are you sending to that one person, right? Like, well, you're bad, right? Like, I mean, there's so many different like layers of that, but we've talked about two books now. We've talked about the Hayes book, the health at every size book, and we've talked about intuitive eating. And I just want to be clear about something, friends. This is, these are not Christian books. Okay. They have helpful, like science data, like interesting things. Like when I started reading intuitive eating, I was like, oh, huh. I've said that. I thought I was original. (laughs) (laughs) But I mean, I was shocked reading the intuitive eating book because it was like, oh my word, she's talking about like worship and idolatry. And she's not Mm -hmm. even a Christian of the intuitive eating book is the one I would recommend because it talks about keto and some of the more recent things. It has some more updated information, but she also goes into like gender fluidity and all kinds of things Mm -hmm. that in my opinion are kind of related to body image issues. So it's like, wait, you've Mm -hmm. solved the problem on this side, but then you haven't solved it on the other side. And the Hayes person was a woman and now she's not a woman anymore. The the author of that book. And, Mm -hmm. and so I think it just goes to show that without the gospel, we can't rely on these books for, yeah. for, for truth. Right. But without the gospel, like we don't have any hope. And, and really that, I think that applies to diet culture too, right? Your diet <laughs> absent the gospel, you don't have any hope, even if it quote unquote works for you. Right. Like, yeah. like none of these quote unquote plans, n- no, nothing works without the truth that you were mentioning, Charlie, unless we know that we were made in God's image, you know, Aaron, unless mm-hmm. we're treating people like image bearers, unless we recognize that Mm -hmm. we're sunk thoughts. Yeah. I, you know, I always share my story. 
I got diagnosed with my autoimmune disease when I was the healthiest ever. Like people would have looked at me and said, wow, like I was the health nut. I did all the healthy things and it totally destroyed my body. Um, so that was not very healthy. Um, and then walking out of that, I started learning intuitive eating and I was a Christian and I, I had a relationship with the Lord, but I did what a lot of people do. I kind of kept these things separate, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that they were connected. And so I was really looking, I was really going into intuitive eating kind of just as I had approached diet and exercise before I'm going to do it right. And I'm mm -hmm. going to be good at it. And I'm going to like get my worth out of being a really good intuitive eater. Um, and then when my faith like exploded and it came on over into that part of my life and my mind was like, Poof! I, 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 like I applied the gospel to eating and exercise and all these things. And it just destroyed this, you know, idea that doing intuitive eating perfectly was going to make me worthy, mm -hmm. was going to save me. And I was a Christian at the time and I was still looking for this salvation really right. in intuitive eating. So intuitive eating, health at every size, X, Y, Z diet plan. None of these things are the answer. Truly the gospel is the answer. And then when we are walking with the Lord, when we're listening to the Holy Spirit, when we're acknowledging our identity in Christ, and we're healing from an eating disorder or from disordered eating or chronic dieting or whatever it is that we can, we can take in the tools of intuitive eating and, and learn the science learn about some health at every size stuff because God created science, right? This we're learning about God's creation when we're learning about the science and it gives us some more knowledge and some tools to use to heal, but you will get nowhere without the gospel. Amen. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on to my interview with Megan, because that's just good truth and just sit there. Erin, she yes. talks about, we, well, we started talking about like how people eat all the things in the afternoon and evening. That's like the number one thing that people say, oh, I can't stop eating the afternoon eating and evening. But Megan talks about the answer being to eat. And you mentioned earlier that the answer, this was in the first episode, that the answer to being afraid of all the foods for you in orthorexia of, of some various spectrum, all right? But the answer for you was to eat. So what, what did you take from that interview? I really liked how you guys hit some of like those common objections people have. Like that's the, oh, I'm, I'm afraid and I'm not even going to try intuitive eating because I think I'm going to eat all the things. That's like the number one thing people say. But I think highlighting the unconditional per permission to eat, which is what Megan covered really well. Like that is, that is the basis for peace with food. That is where the peace comes from. We can eat anything at any time that we want to even candy like we've talked about and that explains why that will help that person who is eating all the things in the afternoon and they're starving at night and it's like well if you had unconditional permission to eat in the morning which for some reason you didn't give yourself you restricted which is not the opposite of unconditional permission like the result is your body and your biology like we've talked about will take over and help you to stay alive by fueling you yeah. Well, I was just thinking about, I think it was Megan that mentioned this, but it may have been someone else. And Charlie, you may have more to fill in here. It might not just be restricting, like not eating during the day, but not being satisfied by what you eat during the day. And so I think about like the times when I've had Franken food or Franken shakes. Um, that's kind of my the little, you know, pseudonym for like diet food or diet shakes or whatever. Right. But it's like, cause it's not real. <laughs> it's like, I have to buy it from this certain company and pay a lot of money for it to have the company's label on it. And, you know, I, one time this is total aside, I bought slim fast bars and I bought a Butterfinger bar and I did a blind taste test in my office to have people taste if they could tell the difference and they couldn't. And we read the like the nutrition information on the back. And they were so similar. It's just the slim fast bar was smaller. So it had like less of everything, right? Because it was like a third of the size, but I was just like, we are just, you know, like, oh, my diet Butterfinger because it has slim fast wrapper on it. Anyway, that's an aside, but we're not, 
we're not satisfied, right? Yes. Like, I mean, when I'm just drinking like three shakes, like I know, like, cause I've lived on protein shakes for a long time, but I know that if I'm not chewing something, yep. there's something missing sometimes that yep. I'm not, you know, like shakes have a place, right. But there there's something missing if you're never getting to chew and that yep. satisfaction part, if, if restrictions, not your deal, you're, I feel like I eat all morning, but you're never eating anything that satisfies you. There's still, still something restricted. missing. Fill, fill that out. Either one of you fill that out. Yeah, you're yeah. still restricting. Right, because I can't have yes. chewable food. I yes. can only drink. <laughs> yeah. So you're you're still restricting. You're not being satisfied. That's why if you want a cheesecake at the restaurant for dessert and you don't do it, you really want it and you're really thinking about it and you're kind of obsessing over it and you decide not to do it and you leave the restaurant and you're still thinking about it when you get home and you're going to have these like healthy grapes for your dessert. <laughs> So you eat the grapes and you're still not satisfied, right? So then you're like, well, maybe I'll have like uh, some frozen yogurt. So you eat the frozen yogurt and you're still not satisfied because it wasn't really what you wanted. So then you're like digging in your kid's Halloween candy and eating stuff that you didn't even like. And you're g- this binge has come from you didn't eat what you wanted to eat and you left that dinner unsatisfied. And if you would have just allowed yourself to eat the cheesecake, mindfully, you probably wouldn't have finished it. Yeah. And I mean, for those of those who are calorie or macro counting brass tacks, you probably would have had half the amount of calories or macros because I mean, I'm not, I'm not endorsing calorie macro counting, but I'm just brass tacks doing the math, right? Eating half a slice of cheesecake at the restaurant is probably always going to add up to less than eating everything in the pantry, trying to find something to meet that need. Right. Well, and that's what we're saying. I mean, that is how dieting actually leads to weight gain Mm, because you are totally getting off you're totally getting off listening to your body. You have no more of that interceptive awareness. You're following all these outside rules and your body is not designed to do that. And you're not satisfied. So you're having these binge, the, the cycling happens and then your biology kicks in and holds on to weight because it doesn't want to be starved again. It doesn't want you to be in a place of not having enough fuel. Um, So, I mean, it's just a perfect example of how dieting in the end leads to this overeating and often weight gain. Yeah. So Erin, you've been intuitive eating for a while now. Do you eat all the things all the time? How has it worked for you? It has worked great. I did go through the, all the things in the beginning. I think that's just part of the healing. Uh, We, we like to describe that kind of as like a pendulum swing. Like I was on the restriction side and I had to swing all the way over and really convince myself, I do have unconditional permission to eat. I can eat foods that will satisfy me. This is, you know, I stayed there for a minute and then my body started talking and saying, hey, we need some vegetables, (laughs) some water, something different. And you get to your middle, you get to that where you are eating what you're in, what you need to fuel yourself. You're being nourished. You're enjoying what you're eating and your body is functioning well. Yeah. That's a good spot to be in. And I've, I've, I've been pretty close to staying in that like pocket of like, this is nice. Mm -hmm. I'm just food is food and I'm enjoying it and I live my life. Yeah. But that unconditional permission to eat, I mean that, you know, it shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be a big thing. It's only hard because signs going up, the lies are so loud. So coming from everywhere, the food police is so loud, our baggage that we carry about that, like you have to unlearn all of that and then relearn this in that kind of, I'm in a new relationship and I'm going to build trust and I'm going to walk this out. (laughs) It takes time to really let that sink in. You can't just understand it intellectually. That's not enough. You have to experientially learn it. Yeah, I think a good starting place is uh, to, to take a minute and think about what Jesus did on the cross mm. for your sins, for your inadequacies, et cetera, et cetera. And then think about your eating choices. Think about food, giving yourself unconditional permission to eat and think about whether your, your food choices have the power to make you good or bad. Mm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Right. I, I did a meme, I don't know, a year or so ago 
about like, why does the enemy need to pull out any big guns with us when all it takes to derail us is like a box of Thin Mint Girl Scout cookies, right? Like it's so ridiculous Mm -hmm. that a box of cookies or a single donut or a slice of pizza could set us off track Mm -hmm. and, and really like, like throw us off of our purpose, right? Like is Mm -hmm. how many times, like even in social situations where we're so overly worried about food, do we miss opportunities to be with people, people that need someone to talk to or listen to, or, you know, so we, you know, but we're so obsessed with food and our rules and, oh, it just, it's, it's aggravating. Put your sign up, Aaron. Like it's, it is a spiritual, it's spiritual warfare. It's a spiritual attack. Okay. So we are almost out of time, but I do want to talk about the last interview I did with Brittany Braswell. And we talked about like the needs that disordered eating, eating disorder behaviors may be fulfilling. And we also just kind of talked about like, what does it mean to have an eating disorder? And I just, I kind of, before we land the, the ship, land the plane, I don't know, one of those analogies, I'm sure. Um, before we land, let me put it that way. How do we know when we need to get help? What, what are the signs of someone who can, you know, there, there's, there's some people that can just listen to the show, listen to your show and just turn the ship. Mm-hmm. But there's some people that need more help. How, how do we know the difference? Yeah. What do you think, Aaron? Okay. I want to interject the lay person's response to this and then let right. you take the professional side. Every person listening to this right now, if you have been on a diet or had said any of these things or thought any of these things we've talked about, like you need help and you need it from Jesus and you need it right now and you can have it right now. Mm-hmm. And then you need to consider, okay, how smoothly do I want this healing journey to go mm-hmm. after I've surrendered control? And then you get to consider what kind of other help you want. Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. Aaron. Like Jesus first, Jesus <laughs> yeah. first and then let's okay. like look at these other tools available to us. I, I first want to say that there is no like not sick enough mm-hmm. to need help. And there is no specific body size that needs help. So if you're thinking, you know, I'm overweight on the BMI charts, there's no way I could have an eating disorder. An eating disorder is your behavior. It's not necessarily your body size. So I think I think it's, it's personal to everyone. But if, if you're listening to the things that we're talking about, um, if you start looking into intuitive eating, and it's too much, it's overwhelming, it's scary, you definitely need some help right if if you're if you look at the principles of intuitive eating and and that it's it's so far away and there that I mean that's just like a no-go then I absolutely would look into professional help getting someone alongside you that can help you work through the principles of intuitive eating and I would definitely say that if you have really been restricting and and the thought of eating food is, is scary. You absolutely, um, should seek professional help. But like I said, there's no, I'm not sick enough. Anybody, even a chronic dieter can really benefit from getting some help with a counselor or, you know, even possibly a dietitian. Yeah, that's good. And, and I wanted to throw in, we didn't actually talk about the interview I did with Tracy Brown, quite frankly, because as I was making my notes, I just forgot that one. So sorry, Tracy, that was not on purpose, (laughs) but Tracy talked, Tracy talked about trauma. Trauma. Mm -hmm. And, and so I just, that's perfect timing to bring that interview up, right? Because Mm -hmm. it might not just be that surface layer. It might just not, it might be about more. And most of the time, maybe all of the time it is about more, right? So it might not just be you and the food. There may be some digging that needs to go on below the surface, some trauma that needs to be healed, whether it's food trauma or more significant trauma than that. Um, So there's, there's all kinds of different traumas. And Tracy talks about her traumas kind of being the death by a thousand paper cuts trauma. She didn't have a big trauma, but she had lots of little traumas that added up and kind of led, led to her path of disordered eating. And, and, you know, she was hospitalized with, with her anorexia. Um, so that's a great episode too. So listen to that one. I didn't mean to miss that one, but, um, but this is good timing to bring that in. So yeah, I, I, I totally, I back that up. I mean, I went into counseling, not knowing I needed help for food and eating stuff. And I would say, even though I didn't spend a lot of time with my counselor talking about my food and eating stuff a little bit of time, 
but healing the other stuff beneath it has mm-hmm. helped me be at a place where I can work on the food and body stuff. So yeah, totally. You don't have to be a certain degree of sick to get help. I think that's really, really wise and go to Jesus first. Thank you, Aaron, for keeping us uh, grounded. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just make sure everybody knows that it is okay to have Jesus and a therapist. Right. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. And a medication if you need it and a dietitian and friends right. and um, Jesus provided all of those things for us. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, and, but I would also say, be careful who you go to, right? Because mm-hmm. you can't just go to any dietitian because you may find a dietitian that wants to put you on a diet. Yeah. <laughs> so, so research, yeah. do your research, talk to one of these women that I've interviewed. If they have space, a lot of them take virtual clients, but do your research first. And, and, you know, and if you're going the counseling route, certainly go to a Christian counselor. There's a list of biblical counselors in the center for biblical counseling, like find someone recommend recommended by someone in your church because the wrong counselor can take you on a a wrong path as well. But okay, let's go back to my interview with Brittany as we kind of wrap things up today. Anything from there that that stuck out to you, like anxiety, anger, like these things are connected. And it's kind of what we were just saying with the trauma, but you know, anxiety and anger, I don't think about those as disordered eating connected things. What Aaron, what what do you you Okay, so the thing that was coming through for me and this kind of ties into the principle of intuitive eating that's um it used to be called coping with your emotions without using food and now it's called coping with kindness. Basically, like like you just said a second ago, it's not about the food and that's Dr. Stephanie's like old podcast title mm-hmm. too cuz it's not. Like your behavior is you coping with something else. Mm-hmm. And the and you're coping with food because you have something else going on that needs some love and attention. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to raise my hand on that being a control thing for me. Mm -hmm. So everything Brittany had to say about surrender and controlling, um, that is such a huge part of intuitive eating. The coping part Mm -hmm. is such a great place to really do some uncovering, like what brought you to this relationship with food. And you will find healing far outside of just your relationship with food and body, especially if you've figured out what the root is and you're working with somebody to get some healing on that. Like it's, this is potentially healing the big picture of health. And if you've surrendered it all to the Lord and doing this, like it's new life. Like you, like this is, this is such an exciting time. Like if you're in that place and you're like, okay, I do have anxiety. I do have like anger issues. It's like, you are about to step into some healing in the name of Jesus. You will be healed from that. Yeah. And you know, I just want to speak from a place of personal experience, definitely have dealt with lots of trauma and depression and anxiety and lots of, lots of the things. If you're to that place of recognizing, oh, like one of my coping mechanisms has absolutely been food, binge eating or restriction. They're the same side of, you know, they're different sides of the same coin. The enemy is going to try to make you feel a lot of shame about that and a lot of condemnation. And that is absolutely from the enemy. The Lord will come alongside you and, sh- and bring these things to light and show them to you. But he does so with open arms, with love, with compassion, with empathy. And one of the most healing things for me was thanking God for the coping mechanism of the food. Hmm. Instead of feeling shame for it, um, being thankful that it was there for me. You know what? I didn't have any other tools. I, I didn't know how else to cope. And this was a way that I coped and, and it served me in a way, mm-hmm. it, you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't actual healing. Like I get from the savior, right. It wasn't, mm-hmm. but it was something that helped me get through really, really, really hard things. And so, you know what? Thank you God for that. Yeah, that's good. That's good, Charlie. Yeah, that's really good. I know that probably touched someone listening or watching today. Yeah, that was really good. Okay, guys, we have to wrap this up. I would love to talk to you all for another hour. Tell everyone about the intuitive eating podcast you guys do, because that's where you need to go next. Yep. You just going to need to go over there and subscribe. So go ahead. Yes. Come, come listen. Um, so the way we set it up was season one is like an online course of a podcast. We set it up with foundational episodes. Then we attacked each of the 10 principles of intuitive eating one at a time on a deep dive through a 
biblical lens, you know, we try and integrate this with um, our faith as much as possible because that's where the strength is, y'all. And you will see that, I hope, <laughs> if you listen. Yeah, and so along with that, we have a workbook, seven bucks. It's like the cheapest online course you could ever do, right? It's $7. It's You can download it and print it and then have the workbook with you as you're listening through season one to take notes. There's lots of reflection questions, um, scripture, uh, all the things really to get started with intuitive eating. That's a, a really fantastic place to start for the Christian woman. Awesome. I hope everyone goes there. I hope everyone grabs the workbook. And I thank you all for being with me today to kind of sum this whole series up. It's been so awesome. And I am so excited to see how God uses it and how God starts to set women free from this food bondage. Woohoo. That's what we want. That's what we pray for. Um, and so, so thank you all for, for being with me and you guys are going to help me a little bit more. I think we're going to start talking about my journey intuitive eating. So yeah. I think we're going to start kind of doing these episodes, maybe where we haven't figured out a schedule yet, but every couple of months where I'll check in with you all and you all will help me on my own intuitive eating journey. So I hope you will listen to that, but that's all for today's show. Thank you so much for listening to compare to who on the edify podcast network. You can download edify at the edify app from your app store, or you can just search edify and that's all for today. I hope something in today's episode has helped you stop comparing and start living. Bye-bye. Hey there, Heather Creekmore here. I have a question for you. Have you read The Burden of Better yet? Let me tell you, friends, The Burden of Better is my favorite book that I've written. <laughs> There's only two of them. But anyway, it's a great book. It's all about how you can have a comparison-free life through the life of grace. And I think you'd really like it. But even more so, I think it would make a great gift for a woman in your life. So would you consider grabbing a copy of it today? It's on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Walmart.com, pretty much any place you would buy a book online, you'll find The Burden of Better, How a Comparison-Free Life Leads to Joy, Peace, and Rest. And I think there's a woman in your life who would really be blessed by this book. And hey, if you're looking for a New Year's study, consider grabbing a few friends and doing The Burden of Better together as a group study. There's scripture in every chapter. There are questions at the end. It's really set up well for you to study it with a small group of women. I think y'all get a lot out of it. So check it out. You can download a free sample of the book if you've not read any of it yet on my website, compared to who.me. Check it out because I want you to not just have a comparison-free Christmas, but to have a comparison-free life.